underrated spells. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So before we jump into today's video, I received a little something in the mail and it looks like it came from YouTube. So I thought I would get out my uh, knife wherever I put that, my knife. Yes, I have a little tiny knife for some reason. Uh, don't judge. And uh, yeah, we're gonna just slide into this thing and uh, read all the comments about people saying, Cody, no, you're, you're gonna kill your, you're gonna cut off your fingers. You gotta go cut, cut away from yourself. Uh, I've had a really good break, guys. I've had a really good break. All right, let's put this knife away. That is that is some knife, knife safety. So without further ado, I present to you, if I can open it up. Is that what you guys wanted? Is that, is that what you guys wanted to see? This nice little foam, this black foam that they sent me. Thank you, YouTube for sending me the foam. Get out of here, foam. Uh, ooh, a letter, cool, let's read this. Uh, you've just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplish. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. We know that numbers on YouTube can get really big, but we hope you don't lose sight of the reality behind that six digit milestone. Each and every person who has subscribed to your channel has been touched by what you created. I mean, I, I hope that's more of a figurative than a literal thing. Uh, they were inspired, challenged, or entertained. You achieved this milestone with hard work, perseverance, and probably a healthy sense of humor too. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, what you've accomplished can be taken away from you unless people unsubscribe. It doesn't say that. Uh, and we'd like to recognize you for all the hard work the Silver Creator were. Okay, and it goes on. So, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. Here is the Taking 20 Silver Creator Reward for passing 100,000 subscribers. Um, wow. Uh, make sure they spelled it right. Yeah, they did. Okay, good. <laughs> how mad, how mad would I be? Uh, wow. Thank you guys. This is really, really cool. I don't know what else to say other than thank you. It means a lot to me. Uh, support me on Patreon. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I mean, you should, but that's not the message I want to give. Uh, this is so cool. And I really, really, really appreciate all of your support. Thank you, and here is a, a my little way of sharing this really cool moment with all of you guys. So thank you very much. Let's talk about spells. All right, guys, let's face it. We all love the classics, right? Spells like haste, invisibility, healing word, bless, and fireball. I mean, what's not to love about throwing 8d6 worth of damage, AOE damage, at level 5? It's really, really powerful. I mean, even the game designers themselves have admitted that they purposefully designed fireball to be overpowered because of just how iconic the spell is. But Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition has a lot of really great effects and spells that often get overlooked because spells like haste and fireball just overshadow them with how dynamic they are. So I thought I'd take a bit to talk about some of the most underrated spells in D&D 5e and give some of these diamonds in the rough another look. Now these are not the absolute best spells in 5th edition and I'm not ranking them from best to worst so they are not in any particular order. First up, we have Catapult from Mordekainen's Tome of Foes, which I'll link down in the description. This is a level one sorcerer wizard spell that generally gets outshined by magic missile. The damage on this thing is surprisingly high, throwing a potential 3d8 points of damage by hurling a one to five pound rock or branch 90 feet in a straight line. But, and this is a big but, it's a save or suck spell, meaning that if your target makes their save, the spell sucks and does zero damage. The reason I'm including it on this list is because something that people often overlook is that you can stack your attack with it, meaning that just because the first target it tries to smash into makes their deck save, it doesn't mean the object in motion stops. So if its ally standing behind it isn't as fortunate with its roll, they would still get blasted. If you manage to find three or more rarely four enemies in some sort of a line, the spell's damage of 3d8 for a level one spell slot becomes pretty solid. But what I really like about this spell is the higher risk, higher reward for implementing good strategy and positioning. And the idea of a wizard carrying, say, three little one pound rocks on their belt to drop on the ground and use as a devastating weapon is a nice little image. Additionally, because of the spell's 60 foot range, the entire battlefield becomes a weapon, a la Yoda versus Count Dooku, grabbing branches and rocks and loose debris from beside and behind the enemy to find the best lines of attacks for the spell. 
Is this spell better than Magic Missile? No, I don't think so. But it has the potential to outpace it in damage, add some flair to combat, and in my opinion, rewards players who enjoy more tactical approaches than I sit in the back and cast spells that auto hits for 3d4 plus 3, and that's why it made the list. Next up is Wrathful Smite. Damn, this spell is good. Bonus action with a one minute duration to make sure it goes off, extra 1d6 psychic damage with the potential to frighten the target. And if the target wants to stop being frightened, they have to spend an action to stop its effects. Uh, yes please. I'll be more than happy to give my opponent disadvantage on the spell my bard is about to cast on them and any attacks they wanna make for the next 10 rounds without giving up my attack. Oh, and did I miss it with the first attack to activate the spell? No worries, I'll just hit you again with it with my extra attack or maybe just on the next round. I mean, what's there to say? This spell is an absolute bomb and I have no idea why more people don't take it when they play Paladin. Bless, Cure Wounds, Heroism, Command are all good level one Paladin spells, but if you can find enough room during your morning prep for Wrathful Smite, you'll get some good, good mileage from it when it goes off. Next up is the level three spell, Plant Growth. This is a spell from the player's handbook that doesn't get enough love. You create a 100 foot radius. Let me say that again, 100 foot radius or 200 foot diameter of terrain that costs four feet of movement for every foot traveled. In addition, you can basically decide these areas over here with you and your allies just aren't affected. They aren't overgrown, so we can all move about normally. Want to escape that pack of hyenas chasing you? Done. Are your enemies too reliant on melee characters? Sit back and laugh as your warlock and ranger snipe them all one by one. Want to stack this thing with spike growth? Uh, yeah, you can do that, seriously. Plant growth does not make the terrain difficult terrain, but rather takes four feet of movement per foot. So when spike growth is cast within its area, it adds difficult terrain to it, to its smaller radius. So now your enemies have to spend five feet of movement for every one foot and every five feet they manage to move, they're gonna be taking 2d4 piercing damage. Granted, that would take two actions and a third and second level spell slot to actually all make happen, but plant growth is available to a fairly wide swath of classes and comboing this strategy could make perfect sense even in character if your PCs were working together regularly in say the jungles of Cholt. On its own, it's solid. Paired with difficult terrain spells in a caster heavy group, it's an absolute bomb. Definitely worthy of making this list. Next up, I wanna talk about three spells that simply put would make you a villainous terrorist capable of bringing the biggest kingdoms to their knees. But first, it's sponsor time. I wanna give some huge love to the Deck of Many. If you guys don't know what the Deck of Many is, they make awesome spell cards and monster cards. They of course have the notorious Deck of Many Things. And these guys just make really, really cool products that make running games at the table just easier. It's just easier to pull out a monster card or pull out a spell card than trying to flip through books or scroll through and hit the find key and typing stuff in. It's it's right there at your hands and they're very, very affordable. So I'm gonna throw a link to all of their swag down in the description box below. Go check them out. These deck of many things will make absolute fantastic stocking stuffers. Don't get another set of dice, guys. Get get a get a deck of many thing. All right, that's that's how we do it. That's how that's how we're gonna do it. I'm telling you, go go support them. Damn it! <laughs> Thank you, deck of many things, for being a part of the taking twenty team. Okay. Let's talk Unseen Servant. Unseen Servant has to be the most fun spell in all of D&D 5e, but it gets overlooked for things like Magic Missile, Sleep, Mage Armor, Healing Word, and even spells like Jump. And it's tough to fit this into known spells for Bards and Warlocks. But for Wizards, this is an absolute dynamite spell that fits into our highly rewarding for highly creative players category, especially because it can be cast as a ritual to avoid eating up a bunch of spell slots. If you have a dungeon master who rewards creativity and is more apt to say yes than no, the sky is the limit with the spell. And while the spell is not truly a combat-based spell, though there are plenty of creative ways you can actually use it in combat, like throwing a bag of finely ground glass into an enemy's face, I would rule that as a DM that that could go off. Uh, really, the spell shines in role play and creative problem solving. Need to check if a door is trapped? 
unseen servant. Need to pull an item off the back wall while you distract a shopkeep with a question over here? Unseen servant. Want to grab the jail cell keys off the wall when you start another Elder Scrolls inspired start as prisoners campaign? Unseen servant. Seriously, the material components for the spell is just a bit of string and wood both easily found from your clothing and chipped off of a feeding bowl or waste bucket. And of course, I've even talked about my unseen butler, Gerard, being used to spread the rumors of the stalker of Nezra, whose simple touch is fatal. Then when we needed to gain access to a guarded area, I birth force screaming, it's the stalker of Nezra, don't let it touch me. While I had Gerard hold up a wooden mask next to a black cloak, when he got close, I pretended to die a horrible death and then had it turn slowly towards the guards and start in their direction. Sprinkle in a little dissonant whispers on one of the guards while my character laid on the ground and pretended to be dead. And needless to say, it was pretty damn convincing as they fled in absolute utter terror. But that's why this spell makes this list, because it encourages creativity, not just number crunching. And in a game where the DM tries to follow the rule of cool instead of constantly saying no, it can be very effective. Next up is a spell that I very specifically put on this list for evil players and campaigns, Glyph of Warding. When you first read Glyph of Warding, tons of evil little thoughts of how you might abuse it come to mind pretty quickly. Then you keep reading and realize it costs 200 gold worth of materials every single time. Damn. But that doesn't mean the spell isn't worth taking. And the reason it costs so much is because it is a really powerful effect. Being able to cast spells onto mundane items and have them trigger with very specific triggers is an absolute bomb. Not to mention being able to tie it to my favorite mechanic in Dungeons and Dragons, alignment. <sighs> Anyways, it gives you flexibility that is pretty much broken. Wanna find out if that mayor you're working with actually has an evil alignment? Just cast Glyph of Warding on a book with a trigger to go off only whenever someone evil opens the book and gift it to him during your next meeting and just leave the room. Did his office explode? Yeah, you got your guy. But still, for good aligned parties, you just don't get the same oomph out of the spell that you can with an evil party. If you're an evil caster, this spell is absurd, and it will let you hold an entire city for ransom if you're high enough level with enough spell slots, because being evil and collecting ransoms is one surefire way to deal with the constant 200 gold tax of new spell casting materials to constantly cast this spell. Combine this with Skyrite, Tiny Servant, and good old Fireball, and with enough time and money, you can wreak havoc on an unsuspecting city, littering the city randomly with exploding books and other items, some of which are so kind to walk on their own. A simple little message in the sky with Skyrite to inform the city that you're now holding them for ransom, and you have your very own Bane in Gotham moment that you would otherwise be unable to achieve with pure brute force. What's left is to just let off a few of the explosions and to find a patsy to go collect your gold with the portable hole, which of course is easy to do through intimidation or simply holding his family for safekeeping. All of this is an insane plan, of course, but it does demonstrate just how powerful Glyph of Warding can actually be. And if you're a dungeon master, giving your villains Glyph of Warding instead of just another lightning bolt can be a very fun way to change up the traditional tropes and strategy. I mean, how would your players even begin to deal with a group of three wizards all working together to hold Neverwinter for ransom with a bunch of glyph of wardings and firebolts, or fireballs, excuse me. I mean, where do they even start to try to find out who is behind the demands or where those guys might actually be located? Great, great plot. So I definitely think Glyph of Warding is one of those spells that is much better than it seems in the right hands. And that brings us to our next very underrated spell on this list, Skyrite. 
Mass communication is one of the most world-changing technologies in all of human history. And that's exactly what Skyrite is, a form of mass communication. Wanna tell all of Waterdeep that Jarlaxle is running a secret sect of drow assassins within the city walls? Skyrite. Maybe you want to unveil that Boris Lightsword is secretly a masked lord, whether it happens to be true or not. Skyrite. Did you just kill a noble and want to plant seeds of doubt that another rival house committed the murder? Skyrite. Or maybe you just want to instill fear after one of your fireballs exploded in the market when a walking book flipped open its pages. Skyrite. And I will say that not Every great use of Skyrite is inspired by nefarious means, just the best ones. It definitely fits our list of underrated spells with tremendous roleplay implications. Next up, we have a very underrated spell, Flock of Familiars. This spell seemingly works like Find Familiar, but with a pretty significant difference. Of course, you'll get three familiars instead of just the one, but unlike Find Familiar, which requires you to be within 100 feet to issue commands and see what it sees, Flock of Familiars reads as follows. Familiars summoned by this spell can telepathically communicate with you and share their visual or auditory senses while they are within one mile of you. Let me just give you the layman version of this. Um, Dungeon Master, I cast Flock of Familiars and would like uh, three tiny lizards with dark vision of 30 feet, please. Okay, uh, next I command them to spread out and search every room in this dungeon. Uh, can you please draw me a map of the dungeon with uh, and tell me where all the bad guys are? Uh, now, obviously I wouldn't recommend phrasing it quite that rudely to your all powerful DM, but you guys get the point. Another reason this spell is an absolute bomb is because while familiars cannot fight in combat and physically attack foes, they can use all other actions, including the help action to grant allies advantage in all attacks. I mean, damn, three owls or three snakes or three ravens helping out three different party members on all attacks for an hour if of course you manage to hold on to concentration that long, is ridiculously powerful, especially if you've already scoped out all the enemies and know the location of each room before you even enter into them. So let's see Bless do something that cool. Next up, we have the Powerhouse Sleet Storm. Competing with our other level three bomb, Sleet Storm is a spell that most people like the look of, but few actually take a chance on it. After all, Lightning Bolt just feels so satisfying when rolling all that damage. But nevertheless, Sleet Storm is easily one of the best control spells in the game. Massive 40 foot radius or 80 feet across, heavily obscures, forces casters to roll concentration checks, difficult terrain, and constant deck saves to avoid falling prone, thus losing half your movement and taking even longer to try and get free of the area. This spell is hard to outclass for pure control casters at any level. Some of the downfalls are that because it heavily obscures, it may be hard to actually get damage in on your tumbling foes, but as they file out one by one, just have the now fully buffed fighter or barbarian just clean house. And if you ever need to flee, this is probably one of the best spells in the game in doing that barring something like teleport. Staying in line with our fleeing motif, fight or flight guys, our next spell is easy to overlook, but it can be absolutely clutch when things start to get hairy, and that's Arcane Lock. Hear me out on this one. This spell is much more useful in combat than you probably think. Most people think about using this to protect their belongings when they sleep or to secure a door at an inn so that nobody tries to come in and assassinate them. But this spell in the right environment obviously can be used both offensively and defensively in the throes of combat as well. Say the group has scoped out the other rooms in the dungeon and has found a pair of ogres keeping watch. Normally, you'll either A, try to ambush them in the room, or B, try to lure them back to a more advantageous position and, well, ambush them in your room. And even when trying to utilize choke points, sometimes you're just going to end up fighting both of them at the same time. 
That's where arcane lock comes into play. Now you can lure the dumb ogres back to the ambush point, and when the first one comes through the door, you can use your held action to close the door and cast arcane lock on it. Kind of like May separating Reinhardt from the rest of his team and heals. In addition to being locked, the door actually becomes marginally harder to break down, and now your party can handle them each separately, significantly lowering the difficulty of that particular fight. Alternatively, cast an ongoing area of effect spell to fill a room full of baddies with a spell like Cloud Kill or Cloud of Daggers and just lock them inside, even using one of your three familiars from Flock of Familiars to lock the back door to by casting the spell through them. And if you need to buy your party a few rounds to heal up, back out of the room and just magically lock the door. It's a great little utility spell, even if slightly environmentally situational. And finally, that brings us to our 10th and final spell on this list anyways, the druid spell Giant Insect. For much of the same reasons that Flock of Familiars is good when you use your summons to aid your party in combat, we have basically a better version of that. The two best insects to summon are the 10 centipedes or the three giant spiders. One of the quickest ways to outpower your opponent is just through pure raw action economy and creating 10 centipedes all attacking and biting or giving your barbarian advantage with out them having to constantly recklessly attack and have disadvantage on their uh, armor class, or I guess advantage for their foes. Uh, this is about as powerful as you can get for a fourth level spell. Additionally, spiders can spit webs in a really cool way that is different from the actual web spell, as it doesn't require a save from a high level opponent, but is rather simply an attack roll. If they hit, you're restrained, and it's going to cost your entire action to free yourself. I'd suggest by having one spider help the other for advantage with a plus five roll, then swapping them out the next round if it doesn't successfully recharge. Either way, they are extra bodies in action economy for the party, and Giant Insect definitely is a powerful but relatively underrated spell in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. So now it's time to pass it over to you guys. What do you guys think of these spells? Did I overrate some of them that really aren't as good as I thought? Or did I miss any other spells that are really, really good, but you guys don't think that people take very often? Now remember, that's the key here, is these are underrated spells, meaning that they don't get chosen very often, but they are still very, very powerful. So what would you guys include on your list of underrated spells? I, of course, want to give a huge shout out to all of the amazing kick-ass patrons who help support this channel over at welcomeadventures.com. Guys, thank you so much for all that you do. It means so much to me. If you guys enjoyed this video, you want to support more content like this and grab some rewards like jumping in a game with me or having a one, once a month meeting with me to talk about your campaign or world building or whatever, there's all kinds of rewards over at welcomeadventures.com and it's a great way to support the channel. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. Every week I put out new videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button down below and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.